The creator of Claude Code, Boris Cherney, recently published this thread showing exactly how he uses Claude Code in practice. The thread itself is made up of text and screenshots, so in this video I'm going to walk through those workflows and show you how to set them up step by step. That way if you want to integrate anything from his workflow into your own setup, you can see exactly how it works on screen. I'll link the original thread below as well if you want to read it in full or join the conversation. The first thing he mentions, as we can see, is that he runs five Claude CLI sessions in parallel in his terminal with the tabs numbered one through five, and he uses system notifications so that he knows exactly when a session needs input. So let's start there. I'll jump into the terminal, set up the tabs, and I'll show you how to run multiple Claude sessions in parallel with notifications turned on. Okay, so we're in our terminal now. I've got four of the tabs set up already with a new Claude session initiated. I'll show you how to do that with the fifth one so you know how to set up a new session and rename the tab. If we jump over here, we can see this is where we can now change to the directory we want to work in. So an important thing to remember, anytime you do start a new session, you want to navigate to the directory that you want to be working in before you launch Claude. Once we've done that, we just need to type in Claude to initiate a new session. Once that opens up, we've now got our workspace ready to go. We now can rename our tab, so up the top right here, if we right click, we can see rename tab. We'll call this one five. In the thread, Boris mentions two things at this point. First, that he numbers his tabs one through five, which we've just done. And second, that he uses system notifications so he knows when a Claude session needs input. Claude code handles this automatically by default, so let's have a look at that now. If you want to have a look at the specific settings, we can use the config command to bring up the config panel. And if we scroll down, we can see notifications here is set to auto by default. That means Claude decides the best way to notify you based on your environment. There are other options here as well. For example, you can force a terminal bell if you want a more explicit signal. But the core idea is the same. This will make sure that you are notified when an input is needed. Once you're running multiple Claude sessions in parallel, you don't need to sit and watch every tab once you've got notifications enabled. Claude will let you know when a session finishes or needs attention. It's worth noting also that someone replied to the thread asking how it works in practice when you're using five agents in parallel, specifically how you avoid conflicts and how you roll back changes if something goes wrong. Boris replied that he runs each Claude in a separate Git checkout so the sessions don't interfere with each other. And if you need to roll back, you can just simply cancel the session. You can just press escape twice to do that and it will roll back any changes. It doesn't go into deeper mechanics here, but the core idea is that isolation and easy rollback are built into the workflow, even when multiple Claudes are running at the same time. With that set up, we can now move on to the next step in the process, which is using Claude Code Web in parallel with Claude Code in the terminal. So the next part in the workflow is that Boris doesn't just run Claude locally in the terminal. He also runs multiple Claude sessions in the browser at the same time. In the thread you can see here he says he typically runs 5 to 10 Claude sessions on Claude.ai slash code in parallel with his local CLI sessions. As he's coding in the terminal he'll often hand off local sessions to the web or manually kick off new sessions in the browser. He also mentions that he sometimes teleports back and forth between local and web sessions depending on what he's working on. The important thing here is that these aren't separate workflows. The CLI and the web interface are just two different ways of interacting with Claude code, and the sessions can live in either place. So if we jump over to Claude.ai slash code, this is what it looks like in practice. Here you can see a list of the options we have. Terminal, which we've already set up. ITE extension, which you can use in VS Code or tools like Cursor. And then we've got web, which is what we're going to use here as part of this workflow. So we want to click on Start Claude Code Web to open up a new session here. If you're setting up Claude Code Web for the first time, you'll be prompted to create your first cloud environment. For this example, I'm just going to leave it as default. We've then got three options for network access, none which would block internet access for maximum security. The recommended setting is trusted, so it would download packages from verified sources. And then full means unrestricted internet access for maximum flexibility. We'll use trusted for this and I'll click create and finish and this will open up our first environment here within Claude Code Web. And you can now see that we have our workspace set up here. I can select the repo in this sidebar chat window. So if I want to work on a specific repo, I can select that here. And you can see how this will work in practice where we can use our terminal and then if we do plan and come up with tasks that we want to work on, we can hand that off to the web agent here and it can work on tasks as well as we continue to plan and iterate within the terminal. 
And as mentioned, Boris says that he usually has five to ten Claude sessions on Claude Code Web running in parallel with his local terminal sessions, and he'll hand tasks off between the two. The easiest way to understand the purpose of the web UI is that it works like a session manager essentially. So when you're coding in your terminal, you're in an active hands-on mode, you're running commands, making edits, and iterating quickly. The web UI is useful when you want sessions to persist and you want to check in on them later. That's why he mentions starting sessions from his phone, for example, and then checking on them later during the day. This is what the website of Claude Code looks like. I've connected GitHub and selected the same repo, which you can see here underneath the chat window. On the left here is also where you can see sessions appear, essentially a list of tasks Claude has been working on or is currently running. Even though this repo is empty right now, the important part is the structure. This view lets you run multiple sessions in parallel, keep track of them over time and come back to them later without needing to keep a terminal tab open. This is why Boris mentions starting sessions from his phone, for example, in the morning and checking in on them later during the day. The web interface gives you persistence and visibility for longer running or background tasks, while the terminal is where you're actively coding and executing changes. So again, the web UI doesn't replace the terminal, it complements it. He uses both at the same time, depending on whether a task needs hands-on interaction in the terminal, or if it can just run independently in the background, that's when he would hand off to web. Before we demonstrate the handoff process, there's one important piece of setup that explains how the terminal and the web UI are actually connected. For Claude Code to hand sessions off to the web, there are four things that need to be in place. First, you need to be working inside a Git repo. You can see that we've set that up and we've selected it here in our Claude Code web UI. Second, that repo needs a GitHub remote, which I've also already set up. Third, the Claude GitHub app needs to be installed on that repo so Claude has access to it. So over here in GitHub, you can see under Integrations Applications, this is where you need to install the Claude app. And finally, you need Claude Code Web open so that you can view and manage those sessions. So you can see the sessions section here, which is currently empty on the left-hand side. When we do hand off a task from the terminal to web, it will automatically get populated here in this section. And then we can jump over to web later on to check on the status and potentially teleport back to the terminal if we want to or continue to prompt and work within Claude Code Web. You also don't have to wire all of this up manually if you don't want to. If you're familiar with this, it'll be pretty easy and straightforward. But if you're new to, say, Vibe Coding, you can actually just ask Claude Code to set this up for you and it will go ahead and set up your Git repo, install remote and set up the web so that you can start handing off tasks from terminal to web. With that in place, we'll now jump back to our terminal and I'll show you how it works. So we're back in our terminal here now and what I'm going to do is use the AND symbol like Boris mentioned to initiate a background task and I'm going to say write a PRD for a task manager app. This is obviously a pretty basic task just as an example but you can see that if you're in plan mode in Claude Code in your terminal and you're working and iterating on a plan, once you get to a point where you've got a task defined really well and you're ready to start working on it, that's when you can then hand it off to the web. Then you can continue planning in your terminal while some of those tasks get built in Claude Code Web. And to do that, as mentioned, you just use the AND symbol here so you can see that this will initiate a background task. If we hit enter, that's going to start the task as a background task. If we now jump back over to Claude Code Web, we should see this in our sessions section. And here we are back in Claude Code Web and we can see write product requirements document for task manager is now in session. So we have successfully handed off that task from our terminal to Claude Code Web. If we click on that, we can check the status. So we can see it is still working on this task. It's updated its to-dos to write the PRD and commit and push changes. And Boris also mentioned that he sometimes teleports back and forth. We can see in the response from our initial prompt, it says resume it later with Claude dash dash teleport and then the session ID. So we can use that command if we want to teleport back into the terminal. If you do end up losing that specific session ID in your conversation and you want to still teleport that same session later on, if you go back to Claude Code Web, you'll see in the URL the session ID is there as well. So if you do ever forget or misplace the session ID, it's easy to find from Claude Code Web. You just copy that and then you can teleport back to the terminal. So that's the full loop, starting a task locally in the terminal, handing it off to the background with AND, monitoring it in the web UI and teleporting back into the same session from the CLI when you need to. 
The important thing to understand is that these aren't separate workflows. The terminal and the web UI are just two different surfaces for the same set of clause sessions. And he moves in between them depending on what he's working on. So that allows you to be a lot more efficient and multiply your throughput because you can hand off tasks as you're working in the terminal. So it's the same repo, the same project. You're just using different sessions within the web UI and the terminal to work on a lot of different tasks at the same time. So that brings us to the next section in Boris's thread, which is number four. Our team shares a single Claude.md for the Claude code repo. We check it into Git and the whole team contributes multiple times a week. Anytime we see Claude do something incorrectly, we add it to the Claude.md so Claude knows not to do it next time. Other teams maintain their own Claude.mds. It is each team's job to keep theirs up to date. The Claude.md file is just a markdown file that lives at the root of the repo and Claude automatically reads it when a session starts. So you can think of it as persistent instructions for how Claude should behave when working in this code base. In the thread you can see here, Boris describes using the file to capture things like project conventions, expectations and lessons learned, especially mistakes Claude has made before that you don't want repeated. Because every Claude session reads this file, it acts as shared memory across all of them. So whenever a session is started in the terminal or handed off to the web or resumed later via teleport, Claude is always operating within the same baseline context as outlined in that Claude.md file. This becomes especially important when you're running multiple Claudes in parallel because it keeps their behavior consistent even though they're working independently. If you're working within an existing code base, you can also ask Claude Code to create an initial Claude.md file for you. You should treat that as a starting draft though, not as an authority because you're obviously going to have your own set of rules and expectations and guidelines that you want to incorporate into the Claude.md file. But that is a way that you can at least have a starting point to work with and review what Claude code comes up with and then iterate from there. I'll quickly jump over to the terminal and just demonstrate how you can do that. So we're back in the terminal and what I'm going to do is just say review this repo and then create a Claude.md file. And you can see here Claude code has now thoroughly reviewed the code base and created the first draft of a Claude.md file. There's not much in this repo at the moment, so it's probably going to be sort of general in terms of what it's created here. But if you've got a really built out extensive code base, it's going to be a lot more relevant and you're going to see things here that are definitely usable. And then you can edit and refine, as I mentioned, over time to get to a better point. But as a starting point, that's also something you can do. Now for the next step in the process, Boris explains how they use code review to make Claude code improve over time. This works through the Claude code GitHub action, which listens for Claude mentions on PRs and then runs Claude with PR context to make the update. The result is that Claude code improves over time as you update that file with lessons that you learn along the way. I'll now jump over to GitHub and show you exactly how this works. Before we can start using the Claude code action, we first need to install the Claude.yaml file that will power that Claude code action in GitHub. To do that, we need to click on add file, create new file. Then we want to name the file and we want to make the path .github forward slash workflows. And then the file we want to name Claude.yml. And now we want to copy the contents of this Claude code action file across to that file that we've just created. I'll put this link in the description so that you can find this file yourself if you want to install this into your repo. We just want to copy the raw file here, go back and paste that in our file and then commit changes. That's going to install this so that Claude can now use the action to actually make changes when we tag it in PRs. Now that that's installed, the final step is to set up our API key for this repo. So if we go to settings within our repo and we go down to secrets and variables and click on actions, you'll see two sections here, environment secrets and repo secrets. In repo secrets, we want to add anthropic API key. That will now enable us to use the Claude action to make changes when we're reviewing pull requests. We'll now jump over and test it out. Now if we jump over to GitHub, you can see we've got a pull request here to add a PRD to the repo. You can see I've added a comment at Claude, update Claude.md with a structure for how to write PRDs. You can see here Claude has seen it and reacted with an eyes emoji to suggest that it has seen it and it is now working on this task. So you can see here Claude bot commented one minute ago. It's got a task and now a to-do list to read the current Claude.md file. 
read the PRD to understand the structure, add PRD writing guidelines section to Claude.md, commit and push changes. And we can see it's now completed that task. It's updated Claude.md. You can see here it has successfully added a comprehensive PRD writing guidelines section to Claude.md. The changes have been committed, which we can see here. So we can click on that, and that's going to show us the full update that it has made to that Claude.md file. So now that we've got the API key set up and the Claude workflow file that we added into our project, we can now update files based on comments when we're doing PR reviews. It's a really powerful workflow, and again, one that Boris uses in his workflow, and that's how you can set it up for yourself. Next, Boris explains that he almost always starts in plan mode. This is an important part of the workflow because it gives Claude space to think through the problem and work out a solid plan before writing any code. And as he mentions in the thread, when the plan is good, Claude is often able to execute the build in a single shot with much better results. So rather than jumping straight into implementation, the focus here is on iterating on the plan first. So let's jump over to the terminal and I'll show you how to access plan mode. Okay, so we're back in the terminal now. And when you're using Claude code, there are three different modes you can work in. By default, you're in the standard mode. In this mode, Claude will propose changes to files and ask you to accept them before anything is written. This is usually the safest option if you want to review changes before they're applied. If we hit Shift and Tab, that's going to change us into Accept Edits On mode, as you can see here underneath the chat box. In this mode, Claude will create or modify files directly without asking for confirmation. This effectively removes the human in the loop, so it's best used once you're confident in what Claude is about to build. If we press Shift and Tab again, that's going to move us into Plan mode. This is the mode that Boris recommends using for most new sessions where the goal is to think through and iterate on the plan before writing any code. Once the plan looks solid, he then switches back to accept edits on mode and lets Claude handle the implementation. So that's how you can use these different modes in your workflow. First, start with plan mode and get a really solid plan in place. Then switch over to accept edits on and let Claude essentially one-shot the build. So that's a look at the initial setup for how the creator of Claude code uses Claude code in practice. His thread also goes into some more advanced topics like custom slash commands and sub agents. I haven't covered those here, but I'll be doing a future tutorial that dives into them in more detail. If you want to read the full thread for yourself, I've linked that in the description below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.